Backyard Wrestling, don't try this at home, and Backyard Wrestling 2, There Goes the Neighborhood, two games that let players compete in no-holds-barred backyard shenanigans, and two games I have actually never played. For whatever reason, I had absolutely no interest in playing the Backyard Wrestling games, and I'm not sure if that's because of the mediocre reviews, the lame box art, the lack of big names available in the titles, or maybe I just didn't see the games while browsing store shelves. I'm a pretty big fan of the Def Jam games, and Def Jam Fight for New York could also be described as a wrestling game that took the action away from the ring to blend in street fighting with grapples and all that good stuff, so the concept of backyard wrestling should be right up my alley. I know the game didn't score well in reviews, but that's about all I know. I watched gameplay years ago and I totally forget what the game even looks like now. So I'm going into this one pretty fresh with no real idea what to expect. I have no nostalgic attachment to these games, I don't have a history with these games, and I don't have any preconceived thoughts about the games. I'm going to play for a bit, write down my thoughts, turn it into a script, and put together the video you're watching right now. The only thing I will research is the game's developers, so let's take a look at Paradise Paradox development before getting started. Paradox Development, the guys behind the Backyard Wrestling games, would eventually become known as Midway Studios Los Angeles. They were responsible for Thrill Kill on PS1, a game that got a ton of attention due to publisher EA's decision not to release the game due to its graphic imagery. The game was leaked online though, and practically everyone who had a modded PS1 had a copy of Thrill Kill. The fact that the game was cancelled only made it more notorious. Eventually, Thrill Kill got reskinned and the game was released as Wu Tang. Shaolin style or Wu-Tang Taste the Pain in Europe, but the legacy of Thrill Kill lived on as one of the most noteworthy cancellations in video game history. The company would go on to develop the X-Men Mutant Academy games, X-Men Next Dimension, and as Midway Studios LA, they also developed Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks and TNA Impact. So there you go, Backyard Wrestling and TNA Impact had the same developers, under different names of course. Backyard Wrestling was released in late 2003, it was published by Eidos Interactive, and seeing as Smackdown Here Comes the Pain was released in the same year, it had some stiff competition. I don't expect a wrestling game here by the way, I expect a fighting game with wrestling elements. But enough of all that, let's take a closer look and actually play a few matches. Alright so I boot up the game and this is the music that plays at the title screen. Pretty catchy, I like it. The title screen shows us some backyard bollocks, we have a few selections here, a talk show mode that I assume is the single player experience, exhibition modes, bonus ga- oh, oh, hello. Yeah, bonus games, create a wrestler, and a media room. In the options menu we have three difficulty levels, medium, hard, and a uh, porn star. Let's stick with hard. The soundtrack has quite a lot of licensed music with tracks from Rancid, Dropkick Murphys, CKY, and Anthrax. Though I'm going to have to turn the music off unfortunately so this video doesn't get flagged. Points though for the soundtrack, it won't be for everyone but that's quite a lot of licensed music they got there. Let's go into exhibition mode and uh, I've only got 9 selectable characters. I assume I need to unlock everyone else so yeah, brilliant. I'll check for a cheat code after playing a match. We have MDog20 here, also known as Matt Cross and Son of Havoc. Josh Prohibition from AIW, he also worked in AWA Mid-South and XPW among other places, and I only know this because I googled him. Looks like we've got quite a few original characters too, and gonna be honest, this isn't overly impressive is it? Some of you real life backyard wrestling connoisseurs are gonna hate me after this video because I won't have any idea who most of these guys are, except for a limited few, but honestly, I don't care either, I'm here to play the games, not talk about backyard fights. I think it's pretty safe to say that the vast majority of people who played this game had no clue who many of these guys were, and please excuse my ignorance here, but I never cared for backyard wrestling and I'm not going to pretend I cared either. I could look up all these guys online and completely bluff it and lie my way through this whole video, but I don't care enough to do that, sorry. Let's go with Mad Dog 20 then, and we'll take on Commissioner, he looks like a jam up guy. We've got a few places we can fight, the backyard, the truck stop, the fucking slaughterhouse, and a gentleman's club. Let's keep it simple to begin with. The game loads up and... Okay, we've got some dude cooking up burgers, the environment doesn't look too bad either, character models aren't terrible, and... Oh, oh. 
Fuck off. Shit. Hey, knock it off. Oh, whoa, whoa. This game has one speed. Fast as fuck. My character runs, he doesn't walk. Commissioner's throwing shit at me and running in with insane karate kicks. And I have no idea what I'm doing. It's an absolute onslaught. I'm trying to work out what each button does, but Commissioner here is relentless. Never have I felt so owned by a video game. The game just punished me and I've got no choice but to share my embarrassment with the rest of the world via YouTube. I'm gonna have to go out and learn the buttons here. I completely jobbed out to the commissioner and I don't even know what happened. First impressions though, it's way too fast and it's really not a wrestling game. There's wrestling moves in there, but it's definitely not the focus. It seems like a race to see who can pick up shit the quickest and who can throw shit the quickest. Not fun, but let's actually learn how to play. The best way to do this is to set up a dummy player 2 and use him as a punching bag. So, on an Xbox controller, X is punch, A is kick, B is the grapple button, and Y allows us to pick up weapons. From a grapple we can press a direction with the A button to perform a move. We can also perform strike moves from a grapple. And we can Irish whip by pressing the grapple button again. The right trigger makes us run and I thought this was dumb at first, seeing as the character runs instead of walking anyway, but pressing the trigger locks onto your opponent while running towards them, so it makes sense I guess. The black button performs a double mule kick, though this changes with every character I'd assume, and the black button also performs your finishing move. Death from above. Finishing moves can be performed when your name starts flashing. Countering is done by pressing X, A or B with a direction whenever your character begins to flash. We'll try to get the hang of that a little later. And these other bars below your name, these are stun meters. Basically, if one of these fills up, you won't be able to attack. The environment is littered with weapons and props. There's ladders you can climb up to do some insane dives and whatnot. There's tables lying around, wrecked cars, and you can drag your opponent to all these things to perform moves and do extra damage. Right, now that we know a little more, let's try to play another singles match. Ah, this is a bit more like it. I definitely feel like I'm more in control, but the gameplay itself just isn't fun. Your opponent just runs around like an absolute madman, picking up shit and just throwing it at you. There's absolutely no chill here with everything going at a breakneck speed, and your mind kinda races as you try to plan out your next attack. I done better this time around, but I still got my ass kicked. Let me stop recording, let me play a few matches until I get a few wins, and I'll come back in a moment with an update. I don't want to call this game absolute dog shit just yet without giving it a fair shot, so I'll stop recording for a little while and I'll try to get good. Six months later. Okay, so after playing a few matches and winning a few matches, I've came to the conclusion that this game should not be played like a wrestling game at all. Don't bother trying to set up grapple moves, don't even focus on performing your finisher. Pick something up off the ground and use weapons when possible. Strike moves are the best kind of defense. Counters are possible, but striking your opponent early will stop your opponent from hitting you in the first place. And that's all there is to it, really. You'll want to use the environment more. You'll want to dive off the roof and put your opponent through tables. But the game moves so fast and the stun time is so short. It feels like a lot of extra work and it's just not rewarding. It's a poor man's Def Jam fight for New York. There's ideas here, but you won't do half the things available because your opponent runs around like an absolute lunatic. You gotta strike first, it's kick or be kicking, so the key to victory is to use punches, kicks and weapons. The running around opponents do during matches is frustrating and so is their reliance on throwing weapons from a distance. There's no way to stop it, there's no block button, and items launched into the air are like homing missiles. You just can't avoid getting hit unless you get lucky, you gotta put up with it, and what more can I say, it's not a fun experience at all. I know there's probably quite a few backyard wrestling fans out there who want to put my sorry ass through a flaming table or a bunch of light tubes, but I'm just being honest. This isn't good. I also found a glitch that can be done pretty much any time at all. Climb up the ladder, stand at the edge of the roof, and watch the CPU completely freak out. This can be done over and over again, and you can easily win matches this way if you don't want to go through the hardships of actually playing backyard wrestling. Fortunately, we do have the sequel to look at very soon, and I'm hoping for some big improvements there. But let's just carry on, and we'll see what else the first game has to offer.
The truck stop level seems to have less items scattered around, but that doesn't make it any better or any worse. I tried to do the ladder glitch here, but my opponent decided to run around in circles instead of trying to climb up after me. I mean, look at this. Just, just look at this. The AI is so confused that it's literally running around in circles. I then became target practice by running around the place and I gotta say... That's pretty funny. The slaughterhouse is dull and uninspired. You can attack your opponents with some dead animals though, wonderful. The gentleman's club has a pole dancer who's gonna kick you if you get too close, and a barman who throws glasses at you. And I swear to god, it baffles me how incredibly dumb the AI is in this game. In every single level there's been an obstacle that the CPU just can't overcome. Again, look at this. I'm not even remotely interested in seeing the other levels the game has to offer at this point, because I know what to expect, but let's go out and check out the talk show mode. So we pick an area and we get a few opponents we need to take out. There's some bonus goals too, such as winning in a certain time frame or breaking a certain amount of objects. We have cutscenes too, but because I turned the music off, it's completely cut off the audio for cutscenes too. Fucking fantastic. So I quit out, I load talk show mode again and check this out. Welcome to the show. Today's topic is backyard wrestling, the scourge of our nation's youth. Now I'm not talking about whacking your buddy with a pine cone or knocking your sister into the hedges. That's good clean fun. So it's a talk show where different people come on to talk about backyard wrestling and how shit it is. You've got this guy here, the barbecue guy from the backyard level, complaining about the wrestling going on in his filthy backyard and the developers tried to make it all edgy. I work for a living, mother I just ruined it, and I've got grill marks on my face. Oh my god. You've got to wrestle three guys in a row here, and you'll unlock wrestlers and new levels as you progress. More opponents and different goals become available as you progress through the game, and the talk show will have new guests. I don't care enough to play through this, so let's use a cheat code and see what else is available before moving on to the sequel. I've honestly had enough of this game already. Here's a look at the full roster, and again, apologies, I'm not sure who many of these guys are. I know the usual suspects, but that's about it. I like how there's a girl named Hernia, though, that's real nice. The other levels available are the mall, the mansion, and the television studio where the chat show gets held. You can unlock videos showing some real backyard wrestling sprinkled with footage of women in bikinis, including Tylene Buck. I mean, it is what it is. And I've nothing more to say about Backyard Wrestling 1. Bonus games sound like mini games, but it's just a few extra standard modes like survival and tag. And here's create a wrestler mode. Yeah, create a wrestler mode. Well, after that, I really do hope the sequel had improvements. Let's boot up the second game and see what happens. From the opening video, we can already see there's more well-known names here. We've got New Jack, Vampiro, uh, Andrew WK. The menus look cleaner from the get-go, so that's an improvement. But let's start a game and see what's different. The character select looks a lot cleaner this time around. We've got adult stars in the game, such as Terra Patrick. Andrew WK is also selectable. And we've also got ICP again, along with Madman Pondo, Nick Mondo, Sandman, Sanjay Dutt, and John Zandig. Jesus! There's no cheat code available for Backyard Wrestling 2, so I downloaded a save using Action Replay. Our boy Jay here completed the game and he left us with a ton of cash, so everything's unlocked. Thank God. Enough dicking around, let's start a match. Alright, so instantly, a big complaint has been immediately addressed. The game has been slowed down considerably, and that's good. There's an overall more cartoony or exaggerated look to the game, and the very core gameplay has been changed. So much so that once again I got my ass kicked in the very first fight, so let's go back to the two player dummy to find out what's going on, and what's new, and what's been changed. Punches, kicks and grapples are all performed the same way as our weapon attacks. However, the stun meter is now gone and it's been replaced with a turbo meter. The turbo meter lets you run around like a lunatic just like the first game, but it'll also let you perform guard breaks, attack counters, ground submissions, grapple escapes and super moves. Basically using your turbo at the right time is the key to victory in Backyard Wrestling 2 and already I liked this sequel infinitely more than its predecessor. You can see some thought actually went into 
of this one and it isn't just mindless running around and hoping for the best. You're also now notified on screen when you've got the chance to perform an environmental attack, giving the player more chances to inflict extra damage instead of guessing if an item is usable or part of the stage. Gotta give it to them here, just the slower pace and the inclusion of the turbo modifier makes things a lot more fun. I played a few games after understanding what I need to do, and yeah, it's a definite improvement. It still isn't a great game by the way, just because they improved over the first game doesn't mean they knocked it out of the park with the sequel, but if you want to start playing Backyard Wrestling for whatever reason, just jump straight to the second release and pretend the original didn't happen. The more exhibitions I played, the more I actually began liking this one. The CPU can still be frustrating, there's still glitches too that are very similar to the first game, but Backyard Wrestling 2 isn't as god awful as I was expecting. Let's go out and take a look at the other game modes, options and extras before wrapping the video up. Once again we have a soundtrack filled with licensed music from the likes of Guar, Lamb of God, Clutch and Saliva. It surprises me that these games aren't brought up at all when folks talk about soundtracks in wrestling games, but then again, these aren't really wrestling games. I'm gonna piss so many people off with today's video, aren't I? In the media room you can watch some videos based on the wrestlers in the game. This would have been great for backyard wrestling fans back in the day. Loads of footage from Combat Zone Wrestling can be found here along with JCW. A few of these videos have to be bought in career mode by the way, I found that out while looking for cheats. Create a wrestler mode is once again quite limited unfortunately. It's more than the basic templates found in the first game but you won't be creating anyone recognisable here. Let's start a new career then and see what's going on there. Yeah, I shouldn't have bothered showing you guys the creation mode already cause you gotta make a custom wrestler for Backyard Wrestling 2's career mode. Let's just make someone really quick so we can look at the actual game. Yeah, that'll do. So the Backyard Wrestling crew have came to town and they're putting on a pay per view. If you can get to that pay per view's main event and win the match, you're gonna win yourself a cool 1 million dollars. Already the other Backyard Wrestlers have begun fighting to get their spot in the main event, so you're gonna go around town and pick fights with the best of the best. What's good here is the career mode will actually learn you how to play the game, something that was missing from Backyard Wrestling 1. You'll win prize money based on how well you perform in a match and that money can be used in the store to purchase movies or create a wrestler parts. Everything's already unlocked in this game save though. You'll win regional championships before getting to the pay per view and when I say regional I mean the east of the city and the west of the city and cutscenes will further the story along. The news reporter here gets messed up throughout the whole game but he gets a little revenge towards the end and the big pay per view at the end of the game takes place in the carnival. From what I gather you'll unlock lock everything on your first playthrough so there's no need to play it twice. I'm pretty sure if I started playing Backyard Wrestling 2 without playing the first game I'd probably think it was awful. It's only because I played the first release that I can appreciate the improvements that were made in the sequel. Make no mistake about it, the sequel isn't a good game but it's leagues better than its predecessor and the praise I'm giving it here is based on what came before it. I also know that I'm being incredibly unfair. I've only played these games for a couple of hours and I'm judging them without truly learning the games inside out. I would get really annoyed with online reviewers ripping games apart that I knew were good, but because the reviewer only played for a little while or they looked up other reviews online, the game that I liked would end up getting instantly dismissed by others. There will be fans out there who enjoyed these games and they might have some attachment to these games too and for you guys I apologize. I can actually see why some fans would enjoy the sequel and the included wrestling footage is also a nice bonus, but I've gotta be honest too. First impressions are not good here at all and Backyard Wrestling is definitely a game series I'd have to force myself to enjoy and no one wants to do that. These games are also products of their time, there's nothing subtle here. From the selectable porn stars, the violent cutscenes, the soundtracks that mixes rock, punk, metal and rap music, it does bring you right back to that early 2000s era where anything remotely underground, such as backyard wrestling, was able to rise up from the ashes and gain more notoriety mainly due to the internet coming into practically everyone's homes. Still, these aren't games I can see myself going back to. Playing these games aren't that much fun for me, especially the first installment, and these are games that I really can't ever see being made again in the future. But that's another two wrestling games covered and two that will unfortunately sit at the bottom of the pile. I did add a few songs from Backyard Wrestling 1 and 2 soundtracks though to my playlist, so it wasn't a total waste of time. 
Thanks for watching this one, guys, and take care.